does any of this, this look familiar? Probably, because this game took YouTube, Twitch, and Steam by storm out of absolute nowhere, causing streamers to become streamers and making players die of laughter. <laughs> So, let's talk about what's really going on in this company. How it perfectly balances between being terrifying and hilarious, why creators around the world suddenly started playing it, and the reason that all of this is directly linked to it being such a gosh dang grand old time with friends. <laughs> now, games being fun with friends has been a thing for decades, and it wasn't that long ago that any title that featured multiplayer essentially meant you can only play this with people you know. Take a look at a series like Mario Party. For most of its lifetime, Nintendo didn't even know what the internet was. So if you wanted to fully experience these games, you needed an available living room, three friends, four controllers, and probably around five hours, because Joey's taking forever to take his turn. Come on and just pick a space. Mum said computer time was to be done by seven. Yet in recent years, when a game boldly states its multiplayer features, it's rarely saying, this is a game that's a barrel of laugh with friends, more just, hey, have fun playing against a bunch of strangers. But this is where Lethal Company really stands out. I think it'd be an understatement to call this a massive surprise hit. The developer behind its creation, Zekas, and I do mean developer, not developers, has released a few previous horror titles on Steam that have reviewed excellently, but have performed, well, middlingly. In fact, they were previously most known for Silent Dark, an award-nominated horror game from 2016 that was exclusive to Roblox. So, on Lethal Company's first few days of release, it came out to little fanfare. Just a few hundred people playing on launch. But that quickly rose to a few thousand by the end of the week. Another week later, it was 20,000. And by the start of December, it had reached a concurrent player count of over 200,000 people. For comparison, that's almost as many as the all-time peak for Team Fortress 2. Again, this was all made by a single guy. Who's only 21 years old? Damn. So there's a good chance you've uh, heard, seen, or well, likely even played the game. But just in case you're only familiar with it through viral clips... No! No, no, don't, don't pick it up! Don't pick it up! It's everyone's gonna die! Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's quickly give a rundown of what this company is all about. You and your fellow employees are working for the company. Your job is to fly to old industrialized moons that are totally abandoned, of course, in order to collect any scrap that may be left behind and bring it back in order to meet the company's profit quota. Along the way, you'll have to be careful to keep yourself in one piece by avoiding mines, turrets, and other things that may kill you. Beep, 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 beep. What Lethal Company excels at is horror on an atmospheric level. Things start out fairly lighthearted. You and your pals piling recklessly into a big building, all wandering in different directions to see who can find the best loot. But all of a sudden you hear a distant explosion and the rattle of gunfire. You quickly realize you've lost sight for the rest of your party. And when you call out their names, you start to think you might be alone. A creeping dread slowly ramps up as you make your way through eerily quiet corridors. That's when you hear a sound that's unfamiliar to you and see something that's not of this world. Holy f <gasps> No! And on the other hand, getting to watch this happen to your friends is bloody hilarious. <coughs> so there's a bunch of reasons this game deserves the hype it's getting, but it does remind me of a similar success story from just a few years ago. A little indie title by the name of Among Us. Alright, so the gameplay of these two couldn't be more different. One being a first-person survival horror PvE game, and the other being a 2D social deduction PvP game. And yet, there's one distinct similarity that has been a crucial factor in their success. And not that they both take place in space or feature, admittedly, adorable crewmates. It's the fact they're what I'm gonna call friend games. Speaking of friends, how about you be a friend and throw a like and subscribe my way. On a channel of my size, it's worth like a hundred times what it's worth on a big channel, so think of it like an investment. I promise it's not just as simple as a game you can play with your friends. See, the simple combination of thing that's fun to do, plus people that are fun to hang out with, is a classic combo that works just as well for pizza parties as it does for gaming. So the phrase better with friends is tossed around from time to time. But isn't just about any game made better with your buds? I mean, I found Elden Ring less frustrating with someone beside me swapping controller after each one of us dies, rather than me constantly and consecutively failing alone. But the point is, you could do it alone. 
the game is still an absolute blast played purely by yourself. And the same could be said for Call of Duty, Rocket League or Fortnite. These are all multiplayer games that make you play with and against complete strangers, but don't make you feel as though you're missing out for that fact, unlike friend games. These on the other hand are experiences that have a couple of essential components that specifically request, if not nigh require, you to be playing with friends to get the most out of them. Firstly, the key to any healthy relationship, communication. And secondly, the key to any terrible relationship, betrayal. Now let's talk about talking. The most crucial aspect to a friend game is the ability to verbally chat to one another. I'm you can't suss out the imposter in Among Us without chatting. You can't defuse a bomb in Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes without communication. And without talking, you can't tell someone in Lethal Company that there's a monster right behind you. It's behind you. And now, obviously, there's nothing stopping you from meeting strangers in an open lobby and making friends over a mutual love of a game. That's great. But with that said, you better make sure you get along pretty well. As a key ingredient that separates a good online game from a good friend game is, um, a healthy bit of trolling. There was a misinput, misinput. Calm down! You calm the fuck down! There was a misinput! You see, unlike making life miserable for a complete stranger, some light betrayal amongst friends makes for a grand old time. <laughs> and so, rather than putting systems in place to stop or ban you for toxic behavior, these games designed features with the intention of you using them to mess with your buds. I'm still the ship! Looking at Among Us, the lying and trickery works so well because of the personal dynamic between players. Which friend did you decide to kill? Is it perhaps your buddy who's caught you in a lie before? And who do you pin the murder on? Is it your pal you know struggles under pressure? Or is it Joey who took the last slice of pepperoni pizza? And it was my birthday and everyone knows pepperoni is my favorite and now there's only Hawaiian left? I don't even like pineapple on pizza. These aren't just multiplayer games. These are games that fundamentally work because they are played with your friends, your buddies, your pals, your gals, your mates, your chums, and your fellow content creators. I'm so bad. God, they really do say the average person turns into a five-star, incredibly talented voice actor when they're terrified of being brutally and horrifically torn apart. The virality of these games cannot be understated as part of their success. Lethal Company's sales naturally go hand in hand with its popularity on Twitch, and the Among Us craze was frankly even more insane. We're talking about a game that had its concurrent players peak with just 37 in its first seven months. Then streamers and creators come along, and we start seeing viewership of over 700,000 on Twitch and frankly, a million billion gazillion views on YouTube. Of course, you can't make a game be viral, but I do think friend games are mechanically engineered in the sort of way that makes them perfect for modern day streaming. See, creators often see it as a fantastic way to collaborate with other streamers, pooling your separate audiences together and increasing the chances of cross-pollination between them. Or to be less cynical, they probably just like being able to play games with their friends rather than having to constantly talk to chat. I know what I'd rather do. On the other hand, viewers like watching a bunch of people they recognize have fun together. Creators constantly chatting amongst each other means there's no downtime. The relaxed, good vibes amongst friends is noticeable. And big betrayal moments make for great content. I'm so sorry, Scissors! I'm so sorry! I'm so sorry! Yet despite the fact that gaming with friends is not only popular on YouTube, but just in general, we don't see many games take advantage of this specific demand. There's plenty of games that are primarily marketed at a single player audience, and frankly, even more multiplayer games that are created to be played with strangers. But Lethal Company is the ultimate example of a game definitively designed with friends in mind. Being an excellent game to play with friends does not happen by mere chance. So Lethal Company has specially designed many features to maximize friend shenanigans. And the developer attempts to communicate this right away. On the Steam page, the first thing mentioned after the game's overview is don't go alone. So even the act of talking in Lethal Company has some fun twists. Firstly, the game features proximity chat, meaning the further away you are from each other, the quieter your voice gets. Which is very apparent when falling from heights. I forgot! 
<laughs> As a result, there can be moments where you're split from your team, leaving you with no idea what's happening to them, eventually calling out into the dark to somehow echolocate them, and instead hearing a final scream before their mics are cut dead. Oh! 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 <laughs> But players aren't the only ones who can use chatter to aid them. See, monsters like the eyeless dog exists, which as its name might suggest is unable to see you due to its lack of eyes. However, they could detect you if you happen to make a lot of noise. Oh, and they can hear you speak. That thing listens, reacts to sound okay? So, shh. Hey, I'm over here! Shut up, shut up, shut up! <laughs> I'm right here! Stop talking! Stop talking! Stop talking! Oh my god! Shit! <laughs> Or you might just be using a mechanical keyboard. Well, now you know how everyone else in the Discord call feels. Communication leads to collaboration, and teamwork makes the company meet profit quota. So there's plenty of times that having a friend on hand can be a valuable asset. Whether it's someone taking Shaggy and Scooby's role of being bait while the rest of the gang goes and grabs the loot, they'll come back for you later, I'm sure. Fleas can be nasty work, but if you've got a shovel guy, those bugs will be no match. And sometimes it can be useful just to have someone keeping lookout. Quite literally, in the Coilhead's case. Since as long as someone competes against them in a staring contest, they'll kindly sit still. And of course, the role of the man in the chair can't be undermined. They can inform players about monsters' whereabouts, as well as teleport them in and out of the facility, to a variable amount of success. And hey, worst case scenario, a friend can be extremely helpful when you're just a few credits short of meeting quota. Sweet, five coins. Which brings me on to my next highlight, because wow, is Lethal Company good at giving your friends opportunities to be terrible people. Now, team killing can be done directly in many fashions, such as the humble shovel. You, you mother- Are you <laughs> There's a winner! Yeah. Team wipe via jetpack. <laughs> no. Or just the good old-fashioned Ladder Royale. <laughs> However, there's also plenty of other ways to screw up your mission, such as using items that seemingly have no purpose other than being very funny. Wait, that thing absolutely attracts monsters, by the way. <laughs> Does it? Hell, if you wish, you can just reject your humanity entirely. Close, close, close the door! Close the door! <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god! What the fuck? Ah! There's tons of examples I could go over about how Lethal Company perfectly blends horror and comedy. To make a game that, while downright terrifying at times, can also have some of the most gut-wrenching, hilarious moments when shared with friends. Which, while feeling new and surprising, ultimately does leave me asking, why are there not more games like this? At the end of the day, if you want to play friend games, you have to have friends to play with. And sometimes, that's easier said than done. Firstly, you need to convince a couple of friends that they would be interested in playing the game. Then, all four of you need to separately buy it. After that, you need to find a time where all of you are actually free to play it. And this is going to become a recurring problem later down the line. Say usually you have time to play a game for a couple of hours every evening, Monday to Friday. Well, now you've got to accommodate for Steve, who's busy on Wednesdays playing sports, as well as Jamie, who works evening shifts Thursdays and Fridays, and also Joey, who's never around on Mondays because he's going around the neighborhood knocking on people's doors for what I'm pretty sure is a pyramid scheme. Regardless, all of a sudden, the five days you can play games on has suddenly become a single Tuesday. In comparison, if myself and a bunch of buds download Fortnite with the intent of playing together, it doesn't really matter if they all get bored and stop after a month if I'm already hooked. And so, I could continue enjoying the game by myself. But that same logic just doesn't apply to friend games. Even if I love Among Us, if all of my friends uninstall it, I can't have the same experience alone. It's me. I'm the imposter. And once one friend stops playing, it's only a matter of time before the entire group moves away from the game. Regardless of this, I do think the massive success can't be ignored. And we're sure to see more of these types of experiences pop up in the future, as there's clearly a demand. Well, gotta go. I've got a profit quota I need to meet. And let me tell you, the boys back at the company are not happy when I miss my profit quota. <laughs> oh, God.